All right. Happy Thursday. Uh, welcome to the Healthy Indoors Live Show. I'm your host, Bob Krell. I'm the founder and publisher of Healthy Indoors Magazine, and thanks for joining us today. Um, you may be watching us on various portals. I'm not really sure where you could be seeing us from. Uh, our primary streaming portal is the Healthy Indoors Online Global Community, but we also concurrently stream on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, and uh, probably a couple other places too. So uh, anyway, welcome. Uh, if you're seeing us after the fact, eh, well, you're not watching us live, but you're watching the recording or maybe listening to the audio podcast. You know, there's a, there's a lot of options here. Uh, what's exciting is this is another two months in a row we've actually released the magazine on a show date, which is unusual for us. So the July issue of Healthy Indoors magazine is uh, alive and well. It's available at HealthyIndoors.com if you're not a subscriber. Hey, but you should be a subscriber uh, for a lot of reasons because it's a free publication. So why wouldn't you? Uh, I think that's a great reason. Um, so uh, we uh, have a lot of great topics in there like obviously the cover story is on indoor chemistry and that's a great cover story by our editor susan valenti but uh jeff may's back with uh may's ways his uh, monthly installment talking about lead-based paint uh we're some uh introductions to uh an upcoming indoor environment show that's coming out in a few weeks and uh carl grimes is back with uh, a great uh editorial uh piece uh on uh Dealing with, I think, a lot of the industry issues with certification and what that means. And we ha actually have an industry feature uh, talking about green marketing. So uh, there's just a ton of good stuff there on this month's edition. Um, so, you, again, if you don't get the, if you don't currently get the magazine or you haven't gotten the magazine, you can get the magazine. So that's, that's kind of a cool thing. Um, it's available over uh, at HealthyIndoors.com. A really easy place to get it, and you can actually click and subscribe. You hit magazine, it will give you the option to uh, get a free subscription. Um, also, the Healthy Indoors Online Global Community, which I just referenced a little bit earlier, uh, where of course we're live streaming there today, uh, but there's a lot of great stuff there. All copies of the magazine, all of our content, plus it's a great opportunity for you to network with other professionals in 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 the in the industry. Why? Boy, it's one of those days. I'm going to be tongue-tied all day. So our guest today is uh, someone I'm really happy to have on the show. Uh, not that he's a newcomer to shows that we do, because he's actually the co-host of, uh, or one of the co-hosts of our Healthy Indoors After Hours program, which we debuted last year. And it'll be back later, uh, that show will be back later this year. That was a monthly hour and a half evening show, uh, more of an adult content show. Not not really, but just a little, the, the premise again of that show is uh being live from an industry event. Um, so without further ado, let me let me introduce our guest for today, Jay West. He's uh, from Air Advice for Homes. Um, and I'm going to have to put the CG up to get your title right because I'll screw it up. Uh, contractor Training and Development Manager. I guess that wasn't that hard. No. Welcome, Jay. You did a good. Thank you. Good to be here, Bob. So yeah, but, good to see you again. Does I mean, anybody I'm, ever welcome you? They should. No, I, I, you, no, not, you know not what, really. Yeah. I, I, that's, I mean, that's I don't know. It, maybe like somebody that's serving papers. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome you here. Wait, Take this. Are you looking for Robert Krell? <laughs> yes, uh, I've got something for you. <laughs> you know, Ed McMahon is not alive anymore, but if he was, I don't think he's going to ever show up on my doorstep, or he never did show up on my doorstep winning the million dollars for Publishers Clearinghouse either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, I don't know. I'd be a little bit scared if that dude showed up at my doorstep with anything. Uh, so anyway, so I, I gave you the introduction as having, you know, being co-host in the other show, which of course you're no stranger to the healthy indoors broadcast, obviously. That's true. Uh, but um, you've, you've been in the industry for many years. Um, and by the industry, I mean, I, guess I collectively think, of the building performance, the weatherization, indoor environmental services, all that under one big umbrella of like healthy buildings and overall, you know, I, I think they're all pieces in different silos, but you, mm -hmm. you've, you've been playing in this sandbox collectively for a long time. Right, right. When I think of industry, I always think of uh, the service industry. So, okay, so yeah, I, I, and I get that. Well, I mean, you, I was there well, you, you, but you know, again, you've been serv service centric, so I totally get that. Um, What's what's interesting, though, I think, um, is that because you, you had mentioned like a long time ago when you came on the uh, the after hour show. I don't really know that much about indoor air quality. I mean, you said that. And it's like, no, no, you know a lot about it because we've had conversations, you know, back from your weatherization training days. It's like you, you have an awful good handle on practical applications of these things. Yeah, so. you're absolutely right. I think, you know. We talk a lot about you know building science, the term building science. I love to throw that around. It's more fun when you when you throw it around with people that are that don't know what it is. 
Um, my kids say I'm a building doctor. I actually have a friend who's a, who's a home inspector. And uh, the other day he asked me if I knew anything about, he said, you know anything about this building science? And I was like, put my hair back in a boat. So like, do I? How much time you got, bro? Said, you wanna, do you want to talk about water migration? What do you want to talk about? Moisture? Right, so that you know an awful lot about IEQ and IEQ because th that's like one of one of the fundamental uh, failure points is moisture migration coming in coming into our building envelope. Right. I mean, a, you know, not the only cause of indoor environmental issues, but it's a big one, right? So, Absolutely. And uh, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and you know, I mean, honestly, I think um, you know, and and uh, you know what, we didn't say thank you or hello to Susan. Susan yes, Valenti's Susan back. Valenti's here. I'm going. I'm going to pull Susan into the stream. Uh, and hopefully, uh, she's not going to be like ill prepared to come online. Hi, Susan. Uh, I am actually really ill prepared. To I know, I know. You did not expect okay. us to pull you pull you in. I'm sorry. Turn the game down. You know, like man. my head is like you know, like my head doesn't like it's, even off with yours, so I have to like kind of. Yeah, we can tip your camera a little bit. You know, if it'll make it easier, we'll go this way, and that'll that'll be easier. How's that? Yeah. Okay. No, I've I'm, actually tr been I'm trying to work with you. Like you know, like, I mean, of course, like giving Jay props for his hair and his mustache, but also that's why um, I brought you. That's why I said, you know, Susan. Susan's got a lot of smart things to say. Yeah, no, um, you know, because I mean, I mean, Bob always says, "Oh, Jay has many years in this industry. How many years have you actually, you know, been doing this?" In two thousand and eight, um, I started in weatherization. I was an energy auditor. Um, in two thousand and by two thousand and ten, um, so I used to work for CETA. CETA Weatherization. CETA is a Community Economic Development Association. It's in Cook County. Cook County is the county that has the city of Chicago in it. So uh, we service the city of Chicago and 34 municipalities, huge amount, by far 13 times bigger than the second biggest uh, weatherization agency in, in Illinois. So, but by far the biggest in the known universe. Um, by my second year, I'd already done uh, right around 800 energy audits in 800 different homes, mostly all, all low income homes. Um, single family detached. So, um, but then I moved into training um, and I was lucky because at that time there was a huge push to tra uh, train the trainer push because we were ramping up. It was the American reinvestment, Obama, um, you know, uh, what do they call that? The uh, Obama, not Obamacare, it was the, uh, anyway, was one of the ones I'm, I'm proud to be, I was proud to be a part of it, but the American uh, Recovery and Reinvestment Act, ARA, which pumped a lot of money into weatherization. So we needed to, to hire, we needed to get people, to, we needed to teach people how to train. And for me, it was like a master's program because I, I have a college education. I have two degrees from Illinois State University. Dead birds, all you people out there, get on the chat line, smash that chat button, dead birds. Um, <laughs> The Ivy League of the Midwest, you probably have heard the of Ivy, it. Yeah, we, we've all heard of it as the Ivy yeah. League of the Midwest, yes. That's probably, that's why I mentioned it, because yeah, it's yeah. probably, then you're like, oh yeah, you've talked about ISU. Um, anyway, I have two degrees, uh, human sexuality and social psychology. They're, they're actually uh, uh, what they call concentrations in the sociology field. I have two minors in psych and philosophy. And I graduated in 1995. And... Um, so by 2010, I was um, taking these courses and, and being trained on curriculum development, um, cognitive psychology, and I didn't realize until then how much my, my, my actual education, you know, learning about um, gathering data, using how people's brains work, how people think in groups, how people's, you know, uh, skills, knowledge, skills, and abilities develop, all those things I'd never really, really kind of coalesce those or kind of focus those on, on a job until that time. And then I realized all my interest in buildings and all these things that I had seen in these people's homes and, 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 you know, and, and in the background, my, really my passion, what, that I wanted to do something good. I wanted to do, and I still do, want to do something with my life and doing something with my life doesn't mean accumulating a whole bunch of money or or you know having buildings that have my names on it to me it means you know helping people making the world a better place as best as i can 
which I tried to do it through music and uh, didn't work. So then I tried, I tried this whole, this whole, uh, this whole energy auditing thing. So I found out I got this training and the thing with me was I was part of a group of trainers at CETA. We did not have a training center. We did not have a classroom. We did all of our training and and this is two years in two years at CETA, we did 22,000 retrofits, full energy retrofits on multifamily mostly, but single family homes. And I was training contractors in the field, HVAC, uh, architectural train I, uh, people. I was training energy auditors. I was getting groups of people who were either guys that were, you know, tended to be, and I, I'm sort of generalizing here, but but for the most part, you could almost find two groups. You had guys that were post tradesmen that generally were not good with technology and didn't had you know no no tolerance for paperwork. And then you had these uh, the other group, which was the younger folks who didn't understand the buildings, who had a little bit more technological savvy, um, but also had no tolerance for paperwork. And uh, I never helped them with the paperwork. Um, but I did that. So anyway, the point is that while I was in these homes, in these people's homes, training the contractors to do um, diagnostic stuff, as well as interpersonal stuff, as well as, you know, systemic, you know, trying to put together a systematic uh, at ways that people could systematically put together, um, you know, what they're seeing, what they're testing for, and then what they're interpersonally, what kind of information they're getting from the people that live there and the surroundings and how they can kind of co put that together and, and actually make um, upgrades um, to, to folks' homes. Well, um, so to me, like I said, after, after doing that, after having so much practical and theoretical training, and I, and I cannot stress the amount of fantastic training um, that I got on training and, and curriculum development and um, co like I said, cognitive psychology. Um, so, um, and, uh, and since then some, uh, you know, e-learning stuff and it's just a whole plethora of things. Um, you know, that's what I really, you know, was trying to do was put that together and help people to not just learn stuff, but be able to do stuff. Um, and to me, like, uh, again, the practical theoretical coming together, it's such a, an intense, uh, 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 amount of time, what, uh, kind of amounted to what I feel like is like a master's program. So I, I, I often say that, I, that, you know, right around 2010, I kind of got this master's in, um, uh, uh, in training building science, uh, and training people. Now I would say that that's huge though, because, and I'm sure you're going to agree on the fact that one of the biggest, I think one of the biggest impediments in this industry, again, collectively, when I say the industry, again, I'm talking in terms of right. across the board, you know, all the different silos that fall in the indoor environmental sector, uh, sectors. Um, it seems like we just don't have enough practical experience, knowledge, and understanding across the board. Yeah, I think collectively as an industry, right? Technicians don't know enough. They don't understand the big picture. Mm -hmm. uh, consumers don't understand enough. I mean, it's, so, so, you know, I, I think what you're describing here is you have a you have a very uh, detailed background in actually getting, you know, developing these types of programs, right? Right. Developing the programs and then um, and then actually delivering building content, um, you know, make it like I said, a curriculum is a plan for education or, or training. The difference between training and education training technically is like teaching people just to do skills that's why I, like dog you know and i don't i don't want to put it down but it's a, a dog training is a very good example you train your dog to sit or stand right and same type of thing like we might be training people to you know it, to screw it in or unscrew it but education is you know with the the, the learning objectives or the, the the outcomes that we're looking for the results from education are for people to apply their the the training or the, like i said the knowledge skills and, and abilities or attitudes depending on what you like to say how to apply that to unforeseen situations and adapt and that's really you know that's really what uh what's i think i think both of those are, are 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 heavily needed and especially nowadays um you know and um with you know the the, the benefit of having a, a pandemic 
um, is that you know now, now everybody seems to have their mind on it. Everybody seems to be thinking about um, indoor air quality, and it's and it's very very difficult because you know we're talking about stuff you can't see, um, and that's that's uh, it's it's a unique point in yeah. time. Clearly, we're we're at a very yeah. unique you know point in all of our lifetimes where you know, we've mm-hmm. never never had across the board as many people at least aware of the you know the indoor air the indoor environments and uh and maybe concerned about them obviously mm-hmm. you know very sars cov 2 centric but still you know mm-hmm. that brings up the thoughts about ventilation it brings up thought of thoughts about building tightness and, you, know, you know so so all of it comes into play i think hey building's got to breathe bob <laughs> i gotta breathe that's an inside joke it's... yeah you uh get it inside get it breathe it's not... Yeah. Uh, Sorry. I have to, you know, I mean, before we get to back to dog training, because that <laughs> was fascinating to me. Yeah. Um, like, what exactly do you do at Air Advice? You know, and like, why do you have this, like, an IAQ report on, and then there's like, and then, and then the like, the camera ends. So I'm like, so now I'm like very curious of, you know, like, what does Air Advice have an IAQ report on? It's a good question. So what I do at Air Advice is I'm the contractor training and development manager. Um, and um, I, that's not what I do. That's my job title. So let me, let me I, yeah. I should answer the what question. Exactly this blessed, do you do? Answer the question. Um, what exactly I do? Well, you know, it depends on the day. No. So my job, what I, what the benefit that I bring, the reason why they pay me is because Air Advice is a manufacturer of of, of, of air quality monitors. And what you do when you buy a monitor, you also buy a subscription. And with that subscription comes a number of things. I'm not going to sell everybody on it. If you're interested, you know, you check the internet, but part of that is training. So I am the guy that does the training. So they've, you know, it, it's, it's important again, the, you know, our, our corporate belief is that uh, like Bob said, is that there is so much training that's needed, not just for us, you know, on a practical level, you know, just that you you have our device. It's in our company and your company and the people that you serve. It's in it's in everybody's best interest that you know how to use this device. And first of all, and it, so you're trained on how to set it up, where to put it, but that you also have that education on how to interpret those results um and you know to improve you know and and ideally the person who buys it generally is using it to uh you know to to help them recommend actions whether it be selling of hvac equipment or you know for a a home inspector um pointing out deficiencies um you know or or you know some folks uh, have them have them actually yeah that's that's the website um some folks have it you know, in their buildings, we have um, um, something that's really interesting, actually, that I should mention, and I think I can. I don't, I don't think there's a Jeff call my phone if I shouldn't be saying this. Um, we've got quite it's a little late now. You're going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> but it, the show is live, though. Um, <laughs> if it was, you should call him. You know, it should the say the word live, live in the title of the show. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. obviously, <laughs> obviously. Yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> No, um, no, interesting. Uh, I know that, um, s- that we have some, s- some folks that we're working with. I'm going to try and be as vague as possible, but it's very cool that, uh, there's these like f- um, small pharmacy home health consultant, uh, companies that, um, are now being asked I, I, in Nevada. They're saying if you can get a, uh, an indoor air quality test, um, then you can, um, you know, help them with certain, you know, insurance will cover certain indoor air quality, um, medication, medications and what other actions you can recommend. Um, so that's really cool. So anyway, that's the, 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 to get back to your question, uh, Susan, what do I do? I support those folks, which is a, which is a, a beautiful generic, uh, you know, corporate, uh, thing to say. So by supporting them, what exactly do I do? I built um, built a certification, which I do want to get to because the reason why I'm here today is I'm on this, the Air Advice 
uh, IAQ specialist certification promotional world tour. Yeah. Is this the first stop at the world tour? Yep. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah. Well, Unfortunately, I wow, that's more, a like Colbert and, uh, you know, Kimmel and all them. So that's good. Right. Yeah. And I am looking for uh, some, some branding help with that. It is kind of a lot of, a lot to say. Um, so I developed a certification and so I did an entire curriculum. The majority of, in fact, it's all e-learning. So I develop e-learning content, you know, and it's all, I first developed the curriculum, which if anybody's interested, you know, let me know, I'll tell you more about it. I'm just assuming you're not, but I built the curriculum based on instructional design that I, all, all the stuff that I learned from, you know, in rel and from the, uh, the, um, uh, the, uh, department of energy and all the training that I got, uh, from, you know, like, a, 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 that I talked about, uh, a moment ago. So I, dev I, dev I developed that, 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 and I use the Addy process if anybody's interested. Um, and then I made the content, um, and, you know, made the, 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 the trainings, made the, uh, made the assessments, which is a, a written test, and then actually a field observation rubric, designed all that, built it, and then, um, and then put it up, um, online. Um, in addition, I do live, tr live virtual trainings and structure led trainings every week. I do, uh, we have a series called getting started. And the intent is that you bought our monitor. Now take the training. We will teach you not, not just like I said, not just train you how to use it, but then also instruct you on, you know, how you can talk to people about it. Um, how you can, how it fits the limitations. Uh, it, and of course, we're always, we're super big on ethics um, at, at, at Air Advice, uh, which is again, one of the reasons why I joined them, which I'm sure is one of the questions that that, that Bob, you're leading up to. Um, so that's what I do. I do online, tr I do live online training and I develop uh, e-learning. And then um, I also have, a, I love making um, a field, uh, field guides and job job aids. It's, it's kind of my, uh, I get excited. So, so by that th things that that technicians out in the field can use in real time, you know, is a, you know, almost like a pilot's uh, pre flight check kind of thing to be able to do, you know, stuff like a that. Absolutely, you know, a yeah. lot of that, a lot of a lot of those. Um, you're right. A lot of those guides that I use aren't so much for the for the, the you know the environmental hygienist, more for um, the guy who is, you know, just got out of HVAC school. Who's a, you know, who's a, a, a new to, you know, HVAC in general is kind of overwhelmed. And, uh, you know, my big thing that I'm trying, the biggest thing that I, that I try and do is help change mentalities. So, you know, it's, again, if we're, we're talking about, we're just talking about HVAC, but in, in almost any trade, and this is something that I learned from, you know, weatherization and energy auditing was that there's such a system systemic approach to buildings, to structures. So the HVAC guy thinks of, uh, you know, he thinks of HVAC and, and, you know, it's funny. I don't know if anybody's ever mentioned this, but one of the things that I say, the, the joke that I use over and over again, and I like to think that I make it seem like I just think of it every time I bring it up, but um, is that the V in HVAC Ventilation. If you don't work in HVAC, almost nobody knows what that means. They think it's like heating versus air conditioning, right? Like, ah, I don't need heating. It's, you know, so I need air conditioning because I'm from the South. So that's what the V is. Ventilation means IAQ. Mm -hmm. Crit so, crit critically important. Critically, right? Yeah, yeah. Else, I mean, yeah. no, I mean, it's, it's one, of, it's one of the, uh, you know, most important things, right? As far as getting, getting air changes, Diluting pollutants, you know, filtration, yeah, yeah, re removing excess moisture. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. such a huge. I mean, such and we and we understand that, right? From because we look at it. Oh, well, because we work in the HVAC industry. Word, <laughs> uh, <laughs> not not just the service industry, but the the point is that uh, that one of the big things that I really try and do, like kind of a general perspective, is get them to understand a that they work in the indoor air quality industry that, you know, stop thinking of, you know, most of their training and it's, it's, you know, the, the other uh, manufacturers of equipment are great. 
they have their own training and stuff, but those tend to be talking about features of the things that you can sell, that they sell you. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just not putting that down. But unfortunately, one of the, you know, a, a negative aspect that grows from that is the idea that I, you know, I sell, I sell a box that I install and then maybe I'll get some additional stuff that I add on to it. That's called IQ stuff. But, you know, so if it's hot out and I'm out there fixing ACs, I don't have time for, I don't have time for, you know, IQ. Um, well, they're the, thinking about it mostly in the upsell mindset is, is I think most, uh, I mean, it's probably not fair to say this, but I think it's right that most mechanical contractors think of indoor air quality as potential upsell peripheral products. Right. Yeah. Additions. Probably. Yeah. Um, and I keep trying to explain to them. And, and so the, the funny thing about that mentality um, is that what, if you're new, then you, and you don't want to sell or you don't want to talk about sales or you're, you know, you, you, are not, you, you're not so certain about yourself. You feel uncertain when you start saying, Oh yeah, my boss told me, I got to tell you that, you know, you also could, you know, have this better fill, you know, this Heimer filter that I could sell as well. And then a lot of guys just like, I don't want to do that. I don't have time for it. And, you know, trying to get them out of the mentality, trying to have, give them the mentality that, that yes, you are the HVA, you know, you are the IAQ industry. You are part of it. In fact, you are a person that's in that. You are the one that has the most power. You guys are in houses, hundreds of thousands of houses, what, a, a day, something like that. I forget what that. I've seen the actual statistics. about oh, across, across the whole United States, as far as yeah. all the service calls. Yeah, I, it, I, that intuitively, it seems like there'd be hundreds of thousands of service yeah. calls daily. I can't remember if it's per day or per year, but per year, obviously. No, no it's millions for a year, probably. Right. Yeah. So if eat, so if they can, if if we can change that mentality just a little bit, first of all, to help them feel comfortable and understand that, you know, that um, that that don't be afraid to, to 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 add this into it because you know you do know more about it than you think. But then in addition, just to keep in mind that you you have the power to do that. So that's a, that's a lot of ostensibly that's what I'm trying to do uh, for Air Advice for Homes. Well, in, so in, I was going to say, so in the pre-show, we, we, we spoke a little bit about, um, yeah. you know, who your, your primary clientele is. And yeah. it's it's largely the mechanical contracting community. Right. Right. Yeah. But not exclusively. Not exclusively, absolutely right. But but again, I, um, I kind of went off on a tangent because I was thinking more about who you know who I'm trying to prop up the most. I mean, who am I when I think about my job? Who am I building those job aids? Because the, the additional question you had was about those those job aids, those field guides. Well, yeah, those are more for uh, the 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 guy who's either new to uh, this uh, his career or someone who is you know, trying to change his mentality from systematic to holistic. Um, but you're right there. We have, uh, we're seeing, you know, right now we're seeing a lot more um, uh, building inspectors or I'm sorry, home inspectors, um, which is really, this is really becoming more popular, which is to me is, is awesome. And I say that because, you know, I, um, I took a back to my, my bio stuff. Um, I took a about a five year hiatus from weatherization and I worked for Retrotech, which is the blue order company, worked with Joe Medosh, um, nice gentleman, balding, but a fascinating guy, very smart. Um, the other co host of the after hour show when we finally uh, start doing it again. Right. Uh, <laughs> and uh, no, but but uh, I worked there and. Um, um, and when I came back, but wh while we were there, we, we did some stuff where we were working with, uh, with building with groups, with home inspector groups. And, you know, we were trying to get them to use blower doors and duct testers and do pressure testing and shell testing. And by and large, they said, no, they didn't want, at that time, it seemed to us, and I don't want to say everybody, but the, 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 the feedback that we kept getting was that they weren't interested in doing any sort of destructive trust testing. They were concerned about killing deals. And now, you know, 10 years later, we're seeing uh, these guys are coming out and they're doing um, they're doing all kinds of testing and they're licensed to do it. And they're, you know, in places like, um, you know, Florida, 
where you know you're not really supposed to like touch a heating and ventilation system right, unless you have you a mechanical have. contractor's license. right yep, um and mm -hmm. so and they're but they're figuring out so they're doing these tests and they're doing indoor air quality tests and they're you know and again back to you know you just talked about you know the people that we're trying to educate and, and so now i'm trying to help them educate real estate agents now i'm trying to help them um help those folks understand how you know how they can use this to, to sweeten the deal how they can make um how fixing things that they don't know about um can actually can actually sweeten the deal so oh, i'm just gonna make a up. comment in well, make the comment and then... that. um well no it just you know it's actually funny to me like you know how like you know like all this stuff is kind of coming full circle you know, I mean, like, I mean, 30 years ago, we were talking about, you know, how can we educate realtors, right? Um, you know, to like, you know, to sweeten the deal. And the realtor's like, eh, I don't want to, I don't want to hear about it. Right. Now it's like, you know, um, especially now that we're like, kind of like going, now the housing market's on a downshift, you know, and, um, you know, and, you know, at the, I'm like, you're not going to get five, over, you know, five full price or over full price offers anymore you have to come up with something mm -hmm. to um you know to get these things sold um my question in terms of the certification you, you know do you have, you know are you do you think you're having do you think you're going to have issues using that word certification um you know you know you know since it's you know certification is not as popular as it was like a decade ago um, you know, and um, I mean, more and more associations are kind of like backing off of quote unquote certification, you know, and now you have a certification that's specifically the air advice certification for da 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 da. Um, talk to me about just that word and how it like how it plays in the industry now. So certification, I mean, still, you know, there's two ways. There's two perspectives. One, there's the the you know. Uh, an instructional design guy like me and and i'm using certification because you know accreditation is for a company and certification is for the person so you could be so like you can be accredited like like the building performance institute uh to do training um and then uh, and cert, i'm sorry not training to do certification and then the certifications are for people the building performance institute does not do training i know that but they do certifications certifications for people um, so from that perspective, I don't, you know, to answer your question, Susan, I don't have any concern about that because I, I, that's the appropriate, you know, the appropriate terminology. However, as far as like, you know, getting people that are interested, you know, from our perspective right now, um, this certification is for people who are, who are actually our, our customers. We are opening it up to people who are not, you know, who don't have a subscription. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's, so it's not, this is not necessarily going to just be for, uh, your device users. Right. Okay. And, uh, it, it began cause you know, again, cause we, we feel like there's a need and when there's a need, you know, I mean, I don't want to get into like, you know, free market economic type of stuff, but I do definitely believe like the market's going to dictate that there is a need for it and people see it. What need and to your, to your, you know, again, I'm going to answer your question, Susan, what's happened now is certifications no longer are just a piece of paper that you have or you know like a letter that you can put after your name there's literally now that badges you've probably seen them or run into them but this is a big an e-badge or a yeah you know, um is a big deal now so it's really well, it's, it's all about gamification it is all about gamification and gamification i can talk about that too generally speaking I'm, i'll go off on a tangent about this just well but a quick tangent this would be a controlled tangent. Uh, okay. People think gamification is when you make training into a game. It is not. Gamification is the idea that uh, that you can bring in elements of a game, like keeping score, like giving out awards and badges, specifically as you as you just pointed out, yep. um, just to name a few things. Um, that that's what gamification is, and so it kind of came from that idea, but. Um, you will see, and you're going to see consistently now more and more often that people have a badge in, on their website or in their email address. And if you click it, it will actually take you to a clearinghouse that, it, 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 like a wiki that says, 
this certification does this, this, and then it will tell you about the certification and what it means. So that's that's the biggest thing that I think that I've seen um, that's that's a difference in, in that's in the marketplace. And, um, you know, so our push is to get that to get that badge out. And then when people click on that badge, um, then they see, you know, the certification and then it and then that certification itself is doing what it's supposed to do, which is, you know, which is proved that you that you're saying this is a, our certification is a competency certification. That means you, you're you know, you've proved that you're at least competent that in the in the the knowledge skills and abilities that are contained within that that certification that you've, you've you you can at least you know you're you're a solid c at least <laughs> i shouldn't say right that. which which actually is it would be good compared to what we currently have right if that, everybody yeah. was a solid c we'd we'd be average right unfortunately we have you know widespread incompetence um, right. And oftentimes a lack of, uh, uh, and, and, and really, again, the point is with the badge is, is, is communicating to consumers and to other folks that uh, what competence means, you know, what, so, you know, this guy says he's an IQ uh, specialist. What does that mean? And, and so you can click on that and, and literally find out, well, that means that this guy can, you know, he can do a certain amount of tests. And again, our certification is, is very specific, you know, to um, because, uh, you know, it, ha it has to it, it, you have to you have to use our monitor to or at least test for six specific parameters, which are going to be, you know, and they're, they're all totals, but particles, uh, chemicals, um, carbon dioxide, temperature, relative humidity and carbon monoxide. Um, you can take uh, test results from any or all of all of those six parameters things that you saw visually um or you know i guess uh, through your um through your you know senses and then uh you can do a an, an interview to like i said before uh systematically approach the house and then have again that you will apply this system that's part of the certification because part of the certification that we're doing is teaching to you to not just not just train you to gather information, but then give you the education to bring that educate that, that those, you know, that information together and then make a decision, uh, you know, because every house is different. Every person's different. Um, and then make that decision on, on what, you know, what, what is ethically and reasonably uh, the, the best uh, action to take to improve indoor air quality. All right. I have to, I, Bob, I have to uh, take the next question. Um, <laughs> So the one thing that we haven't talked about, I mean, you like, you know, early on you had said, you know, you have like talked to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, I assume that, you know, um, their consumers, their techs, their the upper echelon of like, you know, um, of the industry for lack of better word. Billy um, Illuminati. Yeah. <laughs> um, how are you marrying you know, in your mind, all of these, um, you know, needs, people. Yeah, no people, you know, you know, because again, I mean, you, you just brought up consumers, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, you know, and how text with your device should be talking to consumers, mm -hmm. um, you know, you know, but again, you have an extensive background talking right. to consumers. So again, you know, I'm, I'm interested how you're like, putting that all together? Yeah. I mean, it's a, that's a good question. So, you know, my focus is always going to be on the consumer. Um, you know, I, I, like I said, I mean, I, I know I just mentioned that uh, kind of in passing, but I think that that is, you know, it should be, oh boy, I don't want to get too far out, but um, in, to my mind, and you said this is, and thank you, Susan, for saying in my mind, because this is all in my mind, but in my mind, uh, if you really are talking about a free market economy, if you really are, the market are the consumers. So rather you're, you know, Ayn Rand or uh, Mother Teresa, uh, it should always be about, you know, how you talk to people, um, why you're doing tests. It should be about the people. And I think, you know, it's funny that you ask that because one of the, one of the, one of the debates that I have with my with 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 many of my other friends who are also in 
this industry uh, um, who see things more from the perspective of an engineer or a researcher or oh, um, they they want they 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 seem to lack the, the 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 importance of being able to actually just do something you know oftentimes there's a uh you know that that sort of uh, idea of um of um uh, whether paralysis by analysis but the point is that getting people out and talking to people and showing them facts and being able to present facts to the consumer that's where you know that, that it, the more that that happens the more that they buy the more that the the more that the you know that the that the that not so much the researchers they're always going to be a tough nut to crack but the but the manufacturers the guys who produce it the more that's you know that's how you're going to change the, their minds through a uh, you know uh, it's almost like a uh, it's an economic revolution but I mean, being able to convey that information, this is going to follow up on that, but, but, but being yeah, able much. to convey that information in such a way that it's relevant and actionable by a consumer, that is, isn't that really the rub here? I mean, it's like, we, yeah. we don't do a very good job as an industry of doing that. We haven't. No. And, and again, right? it's probably, you no, know, we don't. And it's, and it's, and it goes back to what, you know, Susan's last two questions, they were, you know, Though they were pregnant with that, with that thought, the idea that how are we marrying all these different, in, you know, people that are interested, and haven't we been talking about this for fifteen to twenty years? And that, you know, oh longer, yet, oh, oh yeah, yeah, longer. Yeah. Susan yeah. and I have been around here a long time. You're yeah. still a youngin, you know. Yeah, right. It's like it's like yeah. the, this has been the the discussion since the, the early days of indoor air quality. Oh, believe me, you know, I remember, and I and it's funny because you know we're. You know, we've been early adopters for, you know, uh, for always. And it's funny because I remember it seems 15, 10, 15 years ago being at the, you know, at the at the Home Performance Coalition, uh, ACI at the time being at, and having t all the whole thing was about how we're going to get these these market rate HVAC companies and turn them into, um, you know, home performance companies and um and in my, you know, in my travels now with with uh, with Air Advice, I'm all of a sudden starting to come across these guys that are HVAC companies that are asking me about blower doors, and I'm like, I'm having a heart attack. I'm like, what? You know, you guys are, you want to know what a blower door is? Why? Well, uh, you know, we're doing it, you know, and it's so, so just some, um, and I'll I'll, I'll throw a, uh, I want to throw a. Uh, I want to drop a, a, a shout out to, to uh, Nate Adams, who has this concept of HVAC 2.0, and I've I'm in, in, and he's it's great. He he's made it, he's formatting it, formatting it, and putting it into a way that HVAC guys can get. It. And I'm getting some of these guys who are asking me about blower doors. So, I guess the point is that um, that you know it's the probably the big change is that now people are interested in it. Well, I mean, you kind of need need a blower door if you're going to figure out leakage to outdoors, which has a lot to do with a lot of the codes now, right? I mean, well, yeah, yeah, just being not the able codes. to pass bare minimum codes, you, you well, need to be able to do that. You know what? Guys are asking me about blower doors just so they can do their manual J, and that's that's okay. uh, you know, so they can size heating systems. I mean, they actually do that in residential. At least one or two do. How about a manual <laughs> D? I mean, two more than ever. what about right. the D? Dude, don't even get me started on ducks. Ducks, right? Size. I mean, they just throw. Oh, they put it where they, they. They just in residential. In my experience, right, because oh, I come yeah. from the air duct cleaning industry, right? They just stick stuff together in such a way that it fits around they, the plumbing and the other oh, penetrations. I am literally living your that nightmare right now. I am right? li literally. I can. I keep track of temperature. I'm in the basement. I keep track of the temperature upstairs and downstairs. When the air conditioner kicks on, it is 68 degrees down here and 73 on the you know two feet that way why because the ductwork's got plumbing and electrical sticking out it's got you know it's like they just there's no me who manual d whoever use that uh you know nobody even, what no so yeah it, you know what you know what's happened well sizing too i mean manual j too it's like hey you know what if 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 you know if it calls for you know two tons of air conditioning three tons is better right <laughs> Why? Because then I don't get callbacks. Yeah, well, but, because wouldn't you want more capacity? Because bigger is right. better. It's better, and you know what? But I, I know you don't have you don't. Have, in, and today you only have enough money to change your outdoor, you know, air conditioning unit. So I'm not even going to think about how big your A coil is. But 
you know, give the customer what they want. Uh, yeah. It, but, you know, the funny thing is, so you know what everybody's talking about. That's why nowadays everybody's like, you know what? Heat pumps, man. Heat pumps. Because, you know, because I don't know, ducks are too hard. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I give up. I can't do ducks. Or like the yeah, going mini split and going that whole yeah, oh, yeah, you know. Well, I mean that's but, but think about it. the United States is one of the few places where mini splits weren't really widely adopted. Right. I mean everywhere else in the world there's mini splits everywhere. Oh, everywhere. It's it's you know common. Man, water here too. Everywhere. Yeah. You know. Well, what the heck? All right. All right so I, have to, I have to. I have to bring up you know another big question for me. Yeah. Um, you know, since you're like. Since you're out there training and certifying contractors, um, um, whatever happened to like standards of care and best practices? I'm like, why? Um, why aren't people out there telling consumers, you know what? Right now, this is the best of the best. This is like, this is the best practice. This is, you know, you know, you know, this is a product that works. Um, you know, ten years from now, you know who knows what's going to happen, you know, but why aren't like, you know, and, you know, instead of like the hard sell of, you know, this is the greatest thing since I spread. And this is, you know, this is how we do it. Whatever happened to just like telling consumers like the truth and saying, Hey, this is the best practice right now. Yeah, that's tough. I think again, I mean, it really, it, it obviously it depends on the person again. I mean, if, if I'm, if I'm training, like I said, an environmental hygienist who has, who's, you know, got a sophisticated way of, of uh, interacting with folks. He's got a process that he explains, maybe sometimes over explains. Um, it's not such a big deal, but with, uh, you know, the, 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 the newer folks, the, the techs, um, and even if I'm going to go all the way back to uh, even weatherization, you know, in weatherization, and I worked in the, the federal weatherization program. So, there wasn't a dollar that came out of the homeowner's pocket, but we still trained people to sell this stuff um, so that a, they felt comfortable with what they were getting, but B um, they used it. Um, they knew how to employ it because, you know, it's um, um, I think it's a uh, 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 Joe Seabrook that said something about, and I'll drop the F bombs. Um, but he said something about, you know, you take a perfectly good building and ruin it by putting a person in it. Um, but the, the point is that as far as like the, the best practice stuff, a lot of times, first and foremost, the, those, these folks feel like they have to convince themselves that this thing works and that it is the greatest thing since sliced bread. And oftentimes they're telling homeowners that because they believe it. Um, right. And in terms of the people that are out in the field actually tasked with selling this stuff. Right. Okay. You know, so often, I mean, the, the, I mean, almost every single one of, of especially the newer guys that I talk to, they're, they're, they're actually, they're again, a very much in a paralysis by analysis type of guys where they don't want to sell anything because they haven't, they're not convinced that it's absolutely perfect. They feel like they don't want to be a, uh, they don't want to lie. You know, so many of these guys think that sales is getting people to buy things that they don't need. And then, you know, now obviously, again, in my specific, unique position, I'm trying to teach them to show them. But find the industry out what has traditionally well, done that and I mean, oversold but, I mean, stuff. You know, I mean, but that's my point. This For sure. is the, you know, this is the best thing right now. Mm -hmm. You know, right. and like, you know, and again, that, you know, that that may be the truth. It, it you is. Know, that's not lying. It you is. know, but the you know, but I think where the whole industry gets into trouble, you know, and I, and you're and you're seeing this all the time with researchers, is that yeah, you know, we're you know we're just scratching the surface of where you know of you know of where this is, mm -hmm. or you know you know like I've been doing this for forty years, we may not get there for another thirty years, and you're like, we have consumers, we have right. people who have problems who like who want answers so right. what answers do you give them and they're like you know and, and I, susan you're, you're you know, and i think you're right on track with that because it's, oh, yeah. it's based on what we know now you know it's like because people aren't going to wait till we do like another study or 10 you know over the next decade to right. give them an answer so you two know, things I, oh, go ahead oh no i mean i just think that's where the disconnect 
between like research and practice is, is that you have researchers saying we aren't there yet. And practice is like, I don't really care where we are. I need a solution for my consumer. Right. It's my customer. It's very, it's, it's very, uh, that's a very Eastern philosophical thing. It is, there is no future. There is no past. There's only now Mr. Researcher. And right now I'm about to, I'm about to put in a new air conditioner and I have the opportunity to put in some filtration. But yeah, no, I, I, t- no, I, I agree. Well, there's, there's two things. One, there That's is, an, uh, I, I've, um, you know, f- former, uh, former attorney general Bill Barr said it best when he said bullshit, there is some bullshit out there. <laughs> there is definitely some bullshit out there. So much that to unpack. Not, yeah, that, that, no, there that, is. Well, you know, yeah. and even technology that's overstated yeah. what it can do. Because totally. there's not great totally. technology. UVC is one of the things that drives me crazy in HVAC. Mm-hmm. Very valuable on surfaces it radiates. But the company, you know, companies go out and try to sell that it's going to purify the air that's flying at 500 feet per minute through the duct past the bulb. There, there's your about. bullshit call right there. It, no, it's not. not. It's not going to. Um, it, I did never, I never even thought of that. And then I was watching the show, I don't know, a couple of years ago. It's going too I, fast. Yeah. And so we brought that up. I said, you know what? That makes perfect sense. Um, but anyway, the point, and I explain people that to, that to people all the time, but yeah. And it's, it's not just the technology, it's the application of the technology, but, um, you know, it's, you know, Susan, I, t- I tell, I, t- I, I tell these guys all the time, just if, as long as at the end of the day, you feel like you're doing your best, then that's all we can ask. You know, we're, we are, you know, if we can even help 1% of one, if we help 1% of the folks whose homes we, the, the H just talking about again, H just HVAC people, if they can help, if they can improve the health and just health, not even comfort, just that the health of 1% of the people that they, that they of the homes that they touch and the, the families that they touch the dramatic effect on days lost from work, days lost from school, uh, hospital bills, medications. I mean, it, it's, uh, you know, it, it, I don't, I'm not going to do the, and I'm not going to fabricate any math right now, but it, you know, it's, it's not hard to see that that's millions and millions and millions and millions, right. maybe billions of dollars and, you know, and happiness. So, you know, I try and teach them to, to do their best, but again, you know, as far as that standard of, uh, best practices that that's why I, I brought up the systematic approach. So I, I'm, sh- I'm, sh- I'm saying, okay, guys, you take, you know, three, just look for your, your, the results from your report. Here is how to talk to people and ask them questions. Here's what to say, what not to say, you know, we get into interpersonal stuff. And then here's, here's some things to look for. Now, what we're going to do is we're just going to take four vectors. We're going to take and I'll use rep vectors. I say it called four strategies for improving indoor air quality. We're just going to look at filtration, ventilation, source control, and humidity control. And so, in the so at the after we get all that information, we say, all right, um, do these guy does this guy do they need ventilation? And then I think of the things that I saw and see if they fall under ventilation and need for ventilation. And I say, do they need you know, hum- humidity control. Do they fall under that? And then what I like to do, and then at, at the end of the day, or at the end of the uh, the call, or at the end of that 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 system, then you feel like, all right, now I can look at whatever technology I have, uh, or whatever my company, you know, the 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 specific you know brand products and stuff that my company sells, and recommend those. Um, and you know, uh, it, it, and there's you know, obviously there's so many other things like, can I even get it? When can I get it? Um, you know, products that are, you know, obviously like an ERV and an HRV, you know, the, the ERV, you know, the HRV is not, is definitely not going to work in the deep South. You got to have, you're going to definitely have to have an ERV and, uh, and will either one of them work in the desert in Arizona really, you know, or, um, I had a great, these, these practitioners, I love, and that's one of the things I love about doing these webinars with these guys is we, we they're basically meetings. We talk, you know, it's, it's not just a, like a webinar where they sit, we talk and these guys in Jersey, they had some great stuff. One of the things was, uh, they're like, uh, yeah, Hey, uh, you know, what if, you know, CO2 is like already, you know, 800 PPM outside. How do I bring that down inside with ventilation? Um, well, sort of uh, carbon beds, maybe you could, you know, a la Apollo 13, you know. Oh, yeah, exactly. I mean, it is doable. 
No, it, but my point, it is doable, but my point was to Susan's point was, well, best practices, you know, uh, still ventilate, you know, what's still going to be worse inside because you're breathing and adding to it. So should be. Yeah. Yeah. So that, and then, you know, the other thing was, um, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of those, um, best practices and what it really breaks down to is just, you know, being aware of what you can do and when you can do it. And, um, and if you can do it and if they can afford, it, you know, I mean, and we're, so we're getting to that point where we don't have a lot of time left for almost, mm -hmm. the, I, I knew this was going to go fast. Remember pre-show I said, you know, I didn't want to re really, uh, delve into too many topics. I knew we yeah. would, uh, we'd burn up 60 minutes, like mm -hmm. lightning fast. Um, but, uh, close, final burning thought that we, we didn't touch on, you know, with our, with our line of questioning that you, you'd like to get in there and we'd give you uh, a minute or two just to, uh, throw out, you know, your, you know, your sage, uh, thoughts here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just think, you know, again, um, just from a very, very general perspective, um, something that you mentioned that there is a need, um, and that there are places, and I guess I kind of want to share this more than anything, um, with, uh, with the folks who are, who are listening or paying attention, um, or who care, um, there are, there are so many other certifications and so many badges out there. Um, I, you know, I always got the impression that at least most of my friends that I know that, that, that watch your show and read your magazine are highly educated, have PhDs, um, don't, you know, maybe don't see the You're giving them the, way the, too much credit, our, our readership, but okay, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> but um but there is yeah th but there is there's so many there's so many certifications and badges and um there's so many um sort of certificates that are being uh pushed out uh and uh and there are places you know look look you know uh look online you'll know, do a search for for badge or badge r or any of these other badging places and and uh there are some clearing houses that 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 can help you figure it out but one thing i will say is this if you're looking for a certification, the best litmus test of whether it's good or bad is look at their learning objectives. They're going to say, if you take this certification, you will be able to do something that you couldn't do before. Right. So if it's stated, if it's not stated in something. As in, opposed in way, to certifications, as if you take the certification, we'll give you a certificate. Right. <laughs> Which is good if that's what you want. But if you really want to be able to do something, it should say you'll be able to do something. And if it's not stated in a way that says that's that is that is uh, that you can be that you can assess that is that is measurable. For instance, if, if you see something that says you'll understand X, Y, Z, run away, because how do you measure X, Y, Z? If it says you'll be able to list X, Y, Z. You will be able to differentiate between good X, Y, Z and bad X, Y, Z. Then you're, then you found a, a certification or a, you know, an educational program that, that is, that's built correct. And that is going to, that's going to, that, that's going to help you get to where you want to be. That's it. Thank you. One minute. Su Susan closing. Got any um, final thoughts? I can't questions? wait to talk dog training with you. But that's for a different interview. I'm no, I'm good. You all know, right. Jay answered all my questions, and you know, you know, and God bless Air Advice because they got a good one with you. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, I I would concur. They did get a good one with you, Jay. You know, Thank it's like you. um, you you bring you know, and, and that was what was funny when you know when we asked you to come on the show as as a solo guest here. Um, I I know that you know your first thought was, oh, I don't know, I'm not an IAQ expert. It's like you're an expert you have years of experience don't undersell you know your, your knowledge you. based on what you can do you know so, um, you know, so I, you know, I mean i just want to add you know that like early in the conversation you said you had a master's yeah I, you know and that was in 2010 i mean i yeah. think by 2022 you're out you're actually at the phd level now you know yeah, thank you i am gonna start so, saying that i'm gonna start yeah. calling myself you, yep. yeah yep dr j j it's, it's got a nice ring to it i, I for yeah. some reason it does. I'm. I, I'm gonna. Yeah. Number six. You know, we're 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 actually getting to the age where we we're the ones who know Dr. J was. So I know. I know. I start it's, using people. Like, That's cool. What's that like? He's fairly old looking. I just saw him in I saw him in a film, and he he looked older. Uh, some Netflix film. 
He's it, awesome. see, it made me feel really old <laughs> to actually mm-hmm. see Dr. J kind of walking a little bit crotchety with gray hair. Yeah, well, uh-huh. if you slam that many basketballs, you'd be walking crotchety too. I guess. Too. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. So yeah, so we're we're at that wonderful time where uh, we got we got to go to uh, the closer, the closer. So again, as we mentioned earlier in the show, um, you know the uh, current issue of Healthy Indoors magazine is uh, out and available, right? The uh, July 2022 edition is on the streets online, available at healthyindoors.com or even here on the community uh, global.healthyindoors.com. Just 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 keep working off the healthyindoors.com moniker, you'll be fine. Um, also, uh, wanted to mention again the uh, Healthy Indoors online global community. Uh, definitely a platform you should be looking at. If you're not watching the show on this uh, platform, uh, you should be because it would give you the opportunity to uh, pose questions to our guests. Uh, but so much more uh, opportunity to network and uh, you know uh, commiserate with other people in the industry, which I think is uh, paramount. You know, this is, we we need more information out there. So, um, yeah, I'd like to, again, uh, thank, thank our guest, Jay, and uh, Susan, who has disappeared. Let's see, she's she's, she's been, you know, special. Um, she's we'll do, we'll do it this way. That was quick. Um, yeah, like, she, she, had, she had enough of us. Yeah. It's, it, it happens. Anyway, so, Jay, always a pleasure. Uh, can't wait till we get some more uh, Healthy Indoors After Hours programs up and yeah. going and uh, having you there. Um, I guess that's, you know, I'll, I'll always – entertaining and informative Mostly or entertaining. informative and entertaining if you'd rather make it sound that way if you're informed by entertainment or entertained by informing uh, whatever on that note uh so we'll be back here next week next thursday uh thursday from 1 to 2 p.m eastern daylight time uh for the healthy indoors live show and as jay uh pointed out uh it somewhere it should say the word live to let people know that we're doing yeah. a live show uh but certainly uh learn a little bit more about the healthy indoors uh online global community if you're not part of that Uh, Healthy Indoors Magazine and all of our other assets. Uh, We'll see you next week.